What's going on guys? It is Spencer Gilmore here with Hair Rescue. Today in this video, I wanted to discuss the differences and similarities between RU5-8841 and Finasteride. I've been in the uh, hair growth and hair loss prevention space, talking about all the things in this market, and one of the th reasons that maybe you should listen to me or take my advice with a grain of salt is I do have a company. We've sold over 5,000 men. I've done over 100 consultations talking about products, as well as everything that men could or could not be using. I have to state that I am not a doctor. None of this is medical information. And if you are experiencing hair loss or want to try to get a treatment, you should definitely talk to your doctor or a dermatologist. With that being said, let's get into the video. So first things first, let's talk about finasteride. It is one of the biggest and most widely prescribed drugs on the market. It also has a name of Propecia, which is one of the uh, medical names for it, but the generic term is finasteride. Finasteride is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Now, if you're not sure what that means, it just means it blocks testosterone from converting into dihydrotestosterone, aka DHT. DHT is the main cause of male pattern baldness or androgenic alopecia in men and women today. One of the reasons why we have DHT in the body is it is very important for our growth. It is one of the things that helps with bone development, muscle development, men going through puberty, and it is really important when we're growing up. However, it has been hypothesized that after puberty, it doesn't play as big of a role in our development, in our muscle mass, and everything that has to do with just being a band. I say that's up for debate. I know that a lot of people take these drugs and they know that they're very DHT sensitive, so it can be on a case-by-case -case basis, whereas some people notice that they have no effect when they lower their DHT, so it's really up for interpretation. The data suggests that it really doesn't matter, but I just know that there's way too many stories of people taking things that lower their DHT and taking finasteride in particular and having issues when it comes to sexual function, libido, brain fog, muscle mass, etc. So those are all things that can happen when you lower DHT. But how finasteride works and why you lose hair because of it and how it stops hair loss is because of it, it affects that DHT in your body. And it's pretty effective. You know, it's one of the most widely prescribed things when you go to your doctor or you go to your dermatologist, it is probably gonna be the first thing that they put you on if you're noticing receding hair loss at the top of the head. DHT related hair loss is almost only going to affect you at the top of your scalp. The sides and the back are usually not DHT related hair loss. Now there are exceptions to that rule, but for the most part that is where you're going to lose hair if you are suffering from DHT related hair loss and that is where finasteride is going to take effect. Its mechanism of action is lowering that DHT systemically all throughout the body by inhibiting the testosterone from converting into DHT. It blocks about 70% of that conversion of testosterone into DHT. So that still leaves about 30% of that scalp to DHT to block and a subsequent spike in testosterone. So what that means is you're still going to have DHT and testosterone in your body as well as on your scalp attacking your hair follicles. What they do is they attach to the androgen receptors in your hair follicles, miniaturizing them, shortening their life cycle, and they eventually fall out prematurely. This isn't what anybody wants, and your genetics are gonna play a huge role in how sensitive you are to this DHT-related hair loss. There was a very large double-blind controlled placebo trial done about 10 years ago, and they looked at men between the ages of 30 and 55 years old. And by the time men were 40 years old, it was like 73% of them were noticing hair loss due to androgenic alopecia. So it is more than likely about 75% chance that by the time you're 40, you're gonna start noticing some hair loss. And you can thank your parents for that, that's just the luck of the draw. Now, how sensitive you are and how fast you're gonna lose it, that is your genetics. But there is stuff that you can do about it with things like finasteride. So I went into the uh, pros there. It does block scalp DHT by a decent amount and usually results in less hair shed. That's one of the big benefits of it, and I think that's really one of the reasons why it's so popular and widely used is because it has been deemed as being pretty much effective. Now, when in the clinical trials, when they showed, they showed about a 2% of the people having side effects. Now, if you look at anecdotal evidence and you read through Reddit and you talk to people on the streets, if you ask one in 10 people if they take finasteride and if they've had side effects, that number seems to be a little bit higher. That's just anecdotal, of course, I didn't do the trials, but what I noticed and from how many people have come to me in my business and said, I took finasteride and I got horrible side effects, it's probably more like 10 to 20% of people. So two out of 10. So if you imagine there's a million men in the United States taking finasteride, which that number is very low, but it's still 200,000, 100,000 men that still have androgenic alopecia, still need some way to block that DHT, and they can't use finasteride because they're like, if I have to choose between my hair and my libido or severe brain fog and being lethargic all the time, I'm just gonna choose to lose the hair. And that's really an unfortunate thing to have happen when there are alternatives on the market. Or 
a lot of people take this finasteride and it doesn't work quite like the way they want it to. So what can you do? Well, that leads into the next point here, a topical anti-androgen. And back in the 80s, there was a study done and developed a product called RU58841. It was originally designed for alopecia in the skin and alopecia on the scalp, as well as treating acne. But what they noticed was it systemically or non-systemically blocked uh, DHT wherever it was applied. So it attached to the androgen receptors in the hair follicles. And this is how it has a different mechanism of action to finasteride. Is it because finasteride lowers DHT systemically, whereas RU58841, as well as other topical anti-androgens on the market, attach to the androgen receptors in your hair follicles, thus preventing testosterone and DHT from attaching, miniaturizing the hair follicles and making them fall out prematurely. This is how the two of them differ. And if we actually looked at a PubMed article from the National Library of Medicine back in 1997, I know it's a little old data, but they did a controlled study of the effects of RU58841, a non-steroidal anti-androgen on human hair production by balding scalp graft maintenance on testosterone. They did this on mice, of course, so it wasn't done on humans, but they compared it to finasteride, as well as over an eight month period. Notably, there was a big difference between the vellus hair follicles. In looking at this study, they noticed that there was about a uh, 29 versus 14% increase in the vellus hairs that you had in your scalp, which is a 100% difference uh, between finasteride and RU58841. So it did show some promising results when it came to hairs that are in their fully matured life cycle stage. Okay, so those are some of the benefits of using a topical anti-androgen, which are going to completely avoid all of the pitfalls of the negative side effects of finasteride because it doesn't go systemic on in theory and it doesn't block the DHT all throughout the body. So you still have your high levels of testosterone, your high levels of DHT, and you won't have that affecting the top of your head when it comes to your hair loss. Some of the other benefits of RU58841 is it boosts the cellular replication rate in the matrix cells. It increases the hair diameter, density, and percentage of, of hairs in the antigen phase. This is the growth life cycle of the phase. So you have the antigen phase, which is the growth, the vellus, which is the fully matured hair life cycle, and the telogen, which is the shedding or initial growth of the hair. So you have the three stages of the hair life cycle there. And it also showed equivalent or superior growth compared to finasteride, as well as no negative effects on our hormone levels. So those are all really enticing benefits of why you would use something like a topical anti-androgen over a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride. There is a stronger version called dutasteride, but we won't get into that in this video. So since we have very little data on actually what happened in clinical trials with humans, we only really have to go off of uh, stump-tailed macaws and mice, which are monkeys and mice, to show what they did with the growth life cycle of 5% and 1% RU58841. However, anecdotal evidence can show side effects that look at one, irritation to the uh, site application, which means it's scalp, wherever you apply it, some people can have irritation. However, usually this can go away. And if you choose whatever solution the RU is mixed in, that can also help. So maybe you use something like a PG solution or you use something like a, a VG solution, vegetable glycerin, which I believe Hair Rescue, we might switch over to that soon. Also redness of the eyes, which was a very rare side effect that some people said that they did notice, uh, redness around your eyeballs. I'm not really sure what causes that, but it was some side effect that some people anecdotally noticed if you're reading through like Restless on uh, Reddit. And the most common side effect that a lot of people tend to mention, however, it seems really hard to link that a topical anti-androgen causes heart issues or lung issues, is chest tightness and rapid heartbeat. So this is also one of the scary side effects and why a lot of people say not to use it is because it can cause things like your cause potential lung damage or cause potential heart damage, AKA, you know, maybe you have a heart attack or something like that which would be horrible and you definitely don't want that, but it seems to be extremely anecdotal. And if you are getting a legit source of RU58841, then it tends to be less of a side effect you need to worry about. Now, I can't say that for certain because I haven't done the clinical trials, but I am slightly biased towards it because Hair Rescue does sell this combined with minoxidil. Um, but I always mention that I think people should try finasteride first and definitely talk to a dermatologist and see if finasteride works for them. And if you can tolerate it, then, go down that route without the issues. But if you've been on finasteride for a year and it's maybe not giving you the results you want, or you are taking finasteride and you did notice some of those lower DHT related side effects, then you may want to try an alternative and a topical anti-androgen is really just that. It's an alternative or something you can add in in a routine 
to finasteride. Think of it also as like something like minoxidil. Both of finasteride and RU5841 are going to be hair loss prevention. They're not really hair growth, but they're hair loss prevention. However, if you are stopping hair loss, it makes a more conducive environment for hair growth. And then you add in growth antagonists like minoxidil or rosemary oil or hair growth shampoos of biotin and caffeine and zinc, all things that can help grow hair, as well as maybe microneedling. These are all benefits and things that you can use with RU5841 or finasteride, but not something that has to be used. So overview of available options here. There are thousands of places that seem to sell finasteride either in the oral or topical version. I would mention the topical version of RU has never actually been FDA approved. And if you ever go to Hims Keeps or some of those large uh, websites that sell it, they have to mention that in the FDA. They'll say FDA approved ingredients when in fact uh, the only FDA approved ingredient is the topical minoxidil because the finasteride topically applied has not been shown to be as effective or not been shown at all to be effective compared to orally taken finasteride. So that is an option. But you can get things from your dermatologist. You can get things through an online consultation from Hims, Keeps, and uh, things like Lock Lab or a Happy Head. Those are some of the very large uh, suppliers of finasteride mixed with minoxidil. I think that they're a better together story, truthfully. I don't think you need to be using one or the other. And I think that they're just more effective together. And that's where I would start. And if you're someone who also wants to go down the route of looking for a topical anti-androgen, we do sell it and we will be coming out with an RU only version here soon, I believe next month. So that will be exciting rolling out that along with a hair growth oil that can be used for men and women. But that's really what we're talking about here is the RU and finasteride. RU, one of the recommended daily dosage is 5% strength. Some people use 8% strength, but I recommend 5% to avoid any issues with the side effects that could potentially occur from it, or five milligrams daily to 2.5 milligrams daily oral finasteride. So one milliliter applied to the scalp from the vertex to the uh, temples here, spread it out evenly. You can even spread it up in the morning and evening and use like maybe like 0.75 and 0.75 all the way up to, you know, 1.5 milliliters of RU58841. But that is the recommended dosage and the usage guidelines. It is recommended that you use it every day. Same thing with finasteride because the half-lives of these things is usually around 24 hours. So after 48 and 72 hours, you're going to have very little of it in your system. And if you're inconsistent with that, your hair is constantly going to be in and out of that telogen phase, which is the shedding and making room for new hair growth. So a lot of people, when they get on these drugs, their hair starts shedding even faster and it scares them because they're thinking, oh no, I got on treatment and it's getting worse. When in fact, it's more like a purging phase. It's getting rid of all the hair that was eventually gonna fall out maybe in the next 90 days, but it's just falling out now and making room for the thicker, stronger hairs that are gonna grow through their full life cycle. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Spencer Gilmore with Hair Rescue. Uh, if you'd like to try a topical anti-androgen or add it into your routine, you can definitely check out the link below to our website. It is hairrescue.shop where you can buy your first bottle for 25% off. And we do ship internationally for $19 on all orders just because it is expensive to ship it uh, wherever. But if you'd like to give it a try or you feel like you have some questions about it, I answer all of my DMs on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, and on YouTube. Thank you.